biographical background on your champion golfer of the year, Brian Harmon, the 2003 U.S. Junior Amateur Champion, twice a member of the Walker Cup team for the U.S. side. His two previous tour wins, the John Deere Classic in 2014 and the Wells Fargo in 2017, now the Open Champion at Royal Liverpool. Happy to welcome in Peter Jacobson. Let's start, Jake, with the Open and Brian Harmon, the lefty, winning at Liverpool. What were your overall impressions of the job that he did, how he managed himself and the golf course over those four days? Well, I've always been impressed with Brian. He is a fighter. He's a, he's a tough competitor. And it's interesting that he's not in the prototypical size of today's players. He's not like a Dustin or a Lucas Glover or a Brooks Kepka. He doesn't look like your athletic type guy that can that can play other sports. Brian is more in the in the shape and size of a Corey Pavin or a Chichi Rodriguez, but he's got a heart the size of New York City. And it was on display yesterday. He was getting cat called from the crowd. He was he was being pushed from all sides, uh, figuratively and emotionally, and he he stood up. And every time he he started off on the weekend a little bit shaky, a couple early bogeys on Saturday and Sunday, and then he turned it right around. And every time it looked like he was maybe gonna drop some shots to the field and let the let the chasers come up and catch him, he just he, he just put the pedal down and made some birdies. I was, I, as I said, I've always been extremely impressed with Brian because he's, he's a gritty competitor and he, and he showed it yesterday. Jake, if Brian Harmon was say top three in driving distance this past week at the open, we'd say it's a new era of dominance. And th those would be the splashy headlines. He, he did it with the putter. He was automatic inside 10 feet all week. Why do you think it's the case that, the short game, the finesse, the flat stick isn't held in the same regard as a guy who dismantles a golf course off the tee. No, and that's a problem, George. The one thing that we all know as competitors, uh, at any level, whether you're playing the tours, LPJ tour, champions tour, or amateur circuits, it's all about the one, the player that can make the putts and make the great saves. Look at look at two players that we all know and, and love so well, Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods. These two players have length off the tee, but they do not have accuracy. When you think about it, if you check their stats, they're probably two of the, of the wildest drivers in the history of the game. Yet, their short games, they were masterful. They were magicians around the greens with wedges and putters. And that's what that's what helped them win uh, the incredible events that they've won. So making putts, saving shots when you miss the greens, especially in big moments, that's what's going to win you championships. It was uh, it was true way back then, and it's it's uh, it's true now. But you're right. Everybody loves the Bryson DeChambeau. Remember when he won the U.S. Open at Wingfoot? He was driving it so far and and hacking it out of the, if you missed the fairway, hacking it out of the thick stuff, putting it up on the green, and everybody thought, oh, length's the way to go. But I still believe that it boils down to short game and who makes the putts. Look at what everybody's saying about Rory right now. He gets himself into position, but he can't make the big putts. And uh, that certainly was true with Brian Harmon. He made the clutch putts, even the one on 18. He didn't need to make the one on 18. Uh, he, he was going to win by four, five, or six, whatever the number was, but he made it anyway. It was just kind of like la ti da ho um, I'm going to make another one. So, uh, yeah, the flat stick always is the defining club in your bag. You kind of led me to my next question, Jake, and that is Rory McIlroy. He ties for sixth, but the narrative coming out of the Open was the winless streak continues in major championships for Rory McIlroy. Do you think that it's a positive, or are we still worried about Rory in terms of his overall game and his legacy in major championships? When speaking as a competitor myself, I think it's a positive. You always want to put yourself in position to have a chance to win, and that's what Rory's doing. He hasn't closed the deal of late in majors. I know he's had quite a 
quite a major championship drought, but he's there. And that's, that's better than uh, shooting 80s and missing the cuts, kind of like what Justin Thomas is doing right now. I'm more concerned about Justin than I am with Rory. Uh, Justin's a great player. He's going to figure it out. It's, it's, as somebody said, it's not a, a matter of, uh, of if, it's a matter of when. He's probably going to figure it out very soon. But no, I, I have tremendous faith in Rory. He puts himself in the positions. I think it's kind of in his head right now, to be honest with you. And once he can shake loose of those, of those concerns that he has right now about closing the door and finishing the deal, I still think we have to, I still, still think Rory's got four or five, maybe more majors in his, in his game. He's so good. He's always on everybody's top five list, any, entering any major. And I think he will continue to be probably for the next five to eight years. You're saying he's going to win four or five more uh, on his total now? I do. I do. I, I, I believe I believe that much in his game, George. Uh, when you when you break down his game from the draw, I always try to, whenever I played, I always looked at all the aspects of my game. I broke it down individually to driving, to iron play, where I missed left or right off the tee, where I missed the greens left or right, short or long, pitching, chipping, bunker play. I think if you analyze Rory's game, I think the one area that he's, he's lacking right now is that overall consistency. We'll see him miss a few tee shots wildly every once in a while. We'll see him miss a series of greens, and then it breaks down to the putter. Can he make the, the important putts? But when you stack his game up across the board, it's still extremely consistent. And as I said, I think things are very positive for Rory. I don't have any concerns. It's just a matter of making those putts at the right time. Jake, it's such an odd catch-22, though, because it could go one of two directions with Rory McIlroy. He's, what, 34 years old, same age as when Phil Mickelson won his first. Phil then went on to six more, win six majors total. But Curtis Strange, who had two majors and 17 wins, his last win was at 34, 33, 34, and then he was done. So with Rory McIlroy, we've seen him win four. We know he has you would think the talent but then it's the the weight of the drought and each year the narrative keeps getting pushed further and further and further I would think it's just going to get increasingly more difficult for him to get from four to five but then the jump from five to six you think would be a lot easier that's an excellent point and it's so hard to judge what goes on inside a player's brain what's inside his heart and what's inside his gut and uh, you make a compelling argument. I could go the other way and say that once the dam breaks for Rory, you're going to see him on the leaderboard at these major championships and in the final groups, like we've seen this year, uh, when when uh, uh, he was he was right there at, at all the major champ. Well, not at the Masters, but the last couple of majors and the last couple of years. Um, but it's in. I think it's in his head. I don't think there's anything wrong with his game. His putting stroke, I thought this week, looked really strong, looked very confident. Uh, I thought his chipping was good. I thought every aspect of his game is good. I just think he needs to believe a little bit more. Maybe he needs to sit in front of a mirror, look deep into his own eyes and say, I'm good enough, <laughs> I'm strong enough, I'm okay. Harken back to Saturday Night Live, Stuart Smalley. Um, but... I, I just think for him right now, it's, it's upstairs. It's an outstanding reference, by the way. Let's uh, finish up with the Senior Open upcoming at Royal Porth Call. Uh, Bernhard Langer has won this event four times. He's been the runner-up three times. He's won the U.S. Senior Open this year. Should we just give him the trophy and be done with it? Or is <laughs> anybody else going to win this week? Well, I've always, when I've always been... I always think that it's going to end. I always think, well, he can't keep going. Oh, he can't keep going. But I was on the call at the uh, uh, at the last couple of tournaments that he's won, and it it's it just it's incredible to me. We were up at Century World in Wisconsin when he broke Hale's record, and he's not the longest off the tee, but he's certainly one of the most accurate. He was hitting hybrid clubs 
inside players, eight, nine, seven, six irons all week long. So I think the perseverance and the commitment from Bernard Langer is, is, is probably the strongest club in his bag. In fact, maybe he needs to trade a little bit of that with Rory right now. I think if Rory had uh, a little bit of Langer's uh, uh, confidence right now, I think we wouldn't be talking about Rory as we just did. We were talking about how Brian Harmon's performance was dominating. Bernard Langer had arguably the most dominating performance we've ever seen in the Senior Open back in 2014 at Royal Porth, call winning by 13. And then the next time we had it there in 2017, he won by three. So I think I'm going to side with Witt. <laughs> we're, we're borderline just going to hand, just hand it Bernard over. Langer the trophy this week. Jake, always great catching up with you. Good to talk to you. I'll take the field. You take Langer. <laughs> and we're going to bet for a shiny new dime. Love You're it. On.